Hey, I'm Jason O'Dell, and I want to show you a little Lightroom trick about how you can dramatically expand the dynamic range of your image without having to use HDR. Now, this works really well, especially if you're using a, a newer Nikon camera like a D800 or a D750, one of these newer cameras that has pretty darn good dynamic range, much more than what we had uh, in the old days with like D70s and D2Xs. So this is an image that I captured uh, that you might uh, come across uh, in your shooting, you know, your typical skyline, I'm shooting kind of into the sun, and so it's a pretty strong looking image, there's a lot of contrast here. And I brought the image into Lightroom, um, and there's really two things that I can show you, but this first trick is going to dramatically expand your dynamic range and that's simply changing the camera calibration. Now I've set my Lightroom to default to something that matches what's in my Nikon cameras and that's the Nikon camera standard profile. Um, the default in Lightroom is something called Adobe Standard, which is which is pretty good, but um, I prefer the, the Nikon look as a out-of-the-camera kind of look. It's not the look that I would want when I would process an image, because when I'm processing an image, you know, these are my keepers, you know, the, the 5 or 10 or less percent that, that are the, the ones that I want to publish either on the web or even print. Those you want to have maximum control of your dynamic range. And what you can see on this image is that not only am I kind of clipping the blacks here, if we look, we can see that I'm, that I'm clipping blacks a little bit. This little triangle here is lit up. Um, but, you know, the whole image is just kind of, if we look at the histogram, it's kind of um, bimodal. We've got a lot of darks, and then we've got some brights, and that's in the sky. So here's a trick. Go to your camera calibration panel, and this will work if you're in, in Nikon or Canon. Um, and go to the profile option here and you see I've got mine set to standard there's a bunch of custom ones that I have but these are all the ones from your camera if you change this from vivid or standard or even landscape to something called neutral or in the newer Nikon cameras you can go to camera flat what you get is an incredibly low contrast image but look what happens the shadows aren't clipping anymore and everything got compressed tone wise. Now this isn't the way I'd want to work with this image but then you can go into your basic panel and you can further recover recover shadows, you can recover highlights, and you can use this histogram as a guide. And what I like to do is establish for, for tricky images, okay, establish the white and the black points by using the Alt or Option key on my keyboard while dragging down uh, the whites and black sliders. So what I can do is I can drag down the whites so that I can just see a few specks here. So hold down that Option or Alt key till you get a few specks and do the same with the blacks. I can just set it so that I just start to see a little bit of clipping. From here you can go on and continue to edit the image. Uh, you can add contrast, you can add saturation and vibrance, clarity, um, and if you need to make additional contrast adjustments directly in Lightroom, I would recommend using the tone curve. But for tricky images like this where you want to recover maximum dynamic range and then still edit beyond, I recommend sending this image into Photoshop and doing your adjustments there. So um, that's what I did for this image. And if we go and I compare this with the, the image that I uh, processed, here's the starting point. Here's this image after I ran it through Photoshop. It's a little intense, but I can continue to uh, adjust this and tone down those. I used luminosity masks and other features here to really make that, that uh, sunset look like it's on fire. Now you don't have to go quite that far for your own images. This is exaggerated a little bit to show the effect, but you get the idea. I get a, a image with a lot of pop, but what you can see is I've brought back and recovered a lot of that shadow detail. This is stuff that would be gone if you were shooting in, in JPEG because it would be completely dependent on your in-camera settings. So that's the tip for the day. Maximize your dynamic range in Lightroom and then hand off to Photoshop to make your adjustments if you really need to get fancy uh, and get some amazing looking images with dynamic range and a lot of contrast.
Until next time, I'm Jason O'Dell. Check out my website at luminescentphoto.com. Thanks.